All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. Greetings and welcome to episode 423 of the KISS FAQ podcast. I am your host again this week. Uh, Mr. Julian Gill is enjoying himself still in the lovely UK. We hope that he's having a great time. Rumor has it he'll be returning to our shores sometime tomorrow. Uh, we hope he has a pleasant flight and we hope that he doesn't have too many holdups at the airport and we wish him well. Uh, joining me today is my group of esteemed colleagues. As, as Again, we have Mr. Daniel from Sweden again with us. How are you, sir? I'm a bit under the weather, but uh, okay. Hmm. Our wheeze on the board. I should have mentioned that. Excuse me, my friend. Uh, then we have St. Louis Kiss. Lonnie with us. How are you today, sir? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Right. And then, of course, we have all the way in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, the, Saint, the, the 69th of Blizzard, blah, 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 I'll get that right someday. Uh, Ken Keenan, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, thank you. The voice of reason. So, this week we have quite a few things to talk about, but before we get started on our topic this week, we have our good friend Daniel here, who's gonna talk about a few comments from the last show. Daniel, what are, did you did you see any comments of worth or anything worth discussing this week my friend uh well i think it's uh, a nice tip of the hat to read some of our viewers comments so we go through some of them uh last week you talked about uh, extreme close-up so yeah. there were some yes. comments about that unfortunately i couldn't be a part of the episode but uh, i was in gothenburg watching ramstein ah. it was pretty pretty cool uh, music, the lifeblood. He 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 wrote that Mark's a good host. So that's one for you, Mark. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Pat on the Pat on the Arama <laughs> wrote. I can't believe Bill O'Connor Gene didn't have the foresight to take ownership of all the pro shot material of Kiss performances. I'm sure he could have got it cheap before Kiss blew up in <coughs> 1977. Huh? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Me love Stan. Not me, but but the, the <laughs> name That's is. The yeah, I get That's it. The username. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. The absolute voices of reason. Kiss was not prepping this stuff or similar material for a physical release. I guess you 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 said something about uh, the Kissology. Yeah. For that, some people said, "Oh, it won't come out now." Yeah, right. it's never going to come out. Anthony X, in 92, I didn't even know Extreme Close-Up was coming out. I was at a mall in a Musicland record store one day and saw it on display and immediately bought it. What I really wanted to know for years after watching it was what, what, was, what was that old footage of them playing without makeup. Of course, now we know it to be the Destroyer rehearsals, mm. but back then it was a mystery to me. Great topic and perspective, guys. Mm. And one more. The Opal Archive. KISS followed the exact same trajectory in the 80s that they did in the 70s, in that they had a reinvention around Lick It Up era, then found themselves having to follow trends again towards the late 80s. Yeah, it, it, it kind yeah. of kind of similar. That's true. Yeah. So th there's a few of the, of the comments we got from, from the viewers. Fantastic. I mean... We, we, of course, encourage this kind of stuff to be, you know, written because, you know, sometimes your comments lead us to different ideas, lead us to different topics. And, you know, of course, suggest stuff if you want us to talk about certain things on upcoming shows. We value your, value your input. And uh, thank you again for all the comments that were brought in for last week's episode. Okay, so before we get to our main topic, there are two items of news that we need to discuss. Uh, one of them, well, I, I don't know, but most of them, both of them, I guess, are sort of, you know, I guess, kind of important, maybe. Uh, the first one 
is uh, the Revenge vinyl is delayed a week, apparently. So apparently the release, I'm guessing, of the vinyl version of Kiss Revenge is being delayed. Uh, I don't, I didn't hear anything about this personally because I haven't ordered anything yet uh, in regards to the Revenge vinyl. I went online just now just to check and it's still available. It's not sold out. So I probably will grab one. But apparently uh, the news is that they are uh, delayed a week. Uh, any comments about this? Let's start with Ken. Yeah, well, the good thing is they, they are actually letting people know it's delayed you know they sent it i got an email saying it's going to be delayed um so and it, again it's, and that's only just a week and they're still giving you know they're giving us notice so I, I, that's pretty good they're on top of it this new uh distributor which i, I believe is universal um uh, they're at least on top of it and hey then they don't have to hear from a bunch of uh disgruntled uh, kiss fans saying where's my vinyl you know you said you'd ship it yeah. you know this and you know this date and that sort of thing so but that's a, it's a good thing and it's not again it's not that late yeah i mean if only they would have had that foresight with the dubai thing i know i had to throw that in at least <laughs> once in the episode talk about late you know? <laughs> yeah uh so mr lonnie you being the big revenge man here did this upset you slightly or are you okay with this or i mean it's it's fine it's a week it's nothing to lose any sleep over. I mean, it's fine. I, I, like Ken said, I appreciate them letting us know. And so maybe the day that it's supposed to ship, oh yeah, by the way, we're not shipping it out today type thing. But you know, better late than, than Dubai. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely put there, Lonnie. Uh, Daniel, uh, have you bought this, this album? Did you order this or, or what's, what's your input on this in situation? Uh -huh. I haven't looked it up even. Is there something new on the album? Are there some inserts? Uh, a, a new, uh, a new, it's a new color. Is it remastered? It's just a color. It's a new color. It's a new color once again. Yeah. Oh, okay, well. It's I a silver know. color this time. So. Silver. That, yeah, that, that's a pretty cool color for that album. But uh, uh, I won't buy it just to get another color of an album. Now, even though now, even though it's a great record, I, I already have my old old black one. So that's an interesting comment, though, Daniel. So if they mm. were to say one time that you know we're releasing Revenge, it's on silver vinyl, and there's another second album that has a few studio outtakes and one oh, or yeah. two, you would have jumped on it then for sure. Yeah, you should put that song on it. You know, the one he wrote with Snake Sable from Skid Row. Oh Road, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the instrumentals that we've heard mm -hmm. in top notch culture and the the uh, version with the rapper on one of the songs oh. <laughs> you got to wait yeah, for the deluxe you heard version it? Bruce Kulick played it once uh, a, a snippet of it they had a rapper on which one was it long it was either paralyzed or <laughs> spit one of them paralyzed yeah yeah the one with the mumble i think mm -hmm. it was yes, the mumble. mumble yeah and we could get that one as well the extended mumble version of paris well at least something new yeah. For God's sakes. That's a good. It's a very good point. Very good point. You know, maybe one day they'll clue into this, but I don't think they will. <laughs> uh, so the other bit of news, and this technically should have been much bigger news in the Kiss world. Unfortunately, yeah. it's turned out to be a little bit of a disappointment, and we'll go around the table and talk about this if the guys agree on this. Uh, <clears throat> a few days back, there was a cryptic message saying Sam Loomis is returning. He is returning. So everybody started getting excited about, okay, what kind of fantastic things are we going to be seeing now from Mr. Sam Lewis? And sure enough, he put up about 20 videos again. But this time, they were all like three minutes long, 12 minutes long, 10 minutes long. Some of them were just video, no audio. Some of them were black and white. And that, you know, that's fine. But again, no audio. Or they had ones that were like, the audio was like, you know, it's like so terrible like oh my god i couldn't even listen to it it was like horrendous now sure some of these things are historic like they showed wildwood they showed uh i even have it here just queued up on my phone here so he put up tokyo 95 10 minutes of that a three minute segment or four minute of winnipeg 77 three minutes of phoenix 1983 12 minutes of spokane washington 1977 of which the first five minutes it was just footage of the road crew or something hanging around outside the building i don't know what was the importance of that uh kiss beacon theater 75 some raw footage of eric carr 
you know, a lot of this stuff was, you know, it was, it was, it's good, you know, but I find that there's a little bit of a letdown for me personally. Like it says here too, like Kiss Las Vegas, 1975, both shows, both shows, but it's only four minutes long. You know, how could that's like clips of both shows, not the whole show, right? Would you have preferred him putting up two videos that were complete? Or would you rather him do this kind of like 20 videos of like three minute versions? Let's start with Daniel. The problem is we all know there has been more stuff leaked that Sam Loomis didn't put out. There are complete concerts out there that's been re leaked recently in great quality. Uh, so I'm wondering why he hasn't put... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of one especially that I really like that's out there. Um, but he didn't put that one up there. Uh, it made me think a little bit. There were quite a few 8mm stuff, I think, mm -hmm. that they had mm -hmm. synced sound to. And that made me go and watch a video of how you sync sound to a short clip. There's a video on YouTube that's kind of fun to watch. I don't know if, you, if you've seen it. It's, there's a guy who got a hold of an 8 millimeter clip from Paul Stanley's Solar Tour. 10 mm. seconds. Mm. And then he tries to find out which show is it? Which song is it? Wh which part of the song mm -hmm. it is? Yeah. And then he, 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 do, he does some detective work. And then he finally finds it the, the, the match. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, hmm. that's kind. Of, that was kind of cool to 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 see, but you know, a minute of eight millimeter stuff with sync sound doesn't do it for me. But I know other guys that totally love it. It was kind of cool to see that eight millimeters from the Creatures tour. I think that was my favorite. Yeah, agreed. Lonnie, what what's your thoughts on the? You know, it it, it was a different kind of of leak than what we were used to, or a different kind of leak than what we I think we were expecting. Um, there may be some backstory as to why it was these clips were leaked um, for a shorter duration and not the full concert that we just don't know about yet. Um, maybe it's just a, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe it's just a tease telling us, hey, you know, there's obviously a lot more out there and a lot more um, that's, that's that, uh, that Mr. Loomis has in his possession. Um, maybe just to stay tuned. I don't know. It was. It was. It wasn't. I think what any of us were really expecting. I think some people were really happy with it, but I think others were um, left wanting a little more. So, I guess stay tuned because I, it, it continues to be. It continues to be interesting. I, I agree 120 percent with that, sir. Uh, Mr. Keenan, what are your thoughts on the Sam Loomis leakage? Yeah, I mean, I was expecting something a little bit more, at least. Uh full concert wise you know i was hoping for something like that um yeah the, the little snippets have yeah, this and that some were okay and then there was a couple things that really stood out to me that i enjoyed um i really enjoyed the live two promo thing uh, mm -hmm. i mean you know starting you know it's my first album i ever bought so by kiss um so that was kind of was interesting to me and it's a great quality uh so that was <laughs> <laughs> that was cool um yeah and like daniel said the creatures thing was pretty cool and then then the uh eric carr um you know you know drumming um with his the original makeup oh yeah yeah um, mm -hmm. yeah right um so th that was cool yeah but yeah i i would have liked for me i like the full concerts you know and and of course the best quality we can get it of course but uh Full concerts are a bigger deal for me. Um, ones that, you know, we've never seen or are a rarity um, from a certain, you know, era. era. Um, whether it be makeup or not makeup, it doesn't matter. But just a good quality, full length concert of Kiss is always good. Yes, absolutely agree with that. Now, before we get to today's topic there's one thing that we didn't put on the list here that i'm going to kind of jump on you guys with here just really quickly huh. and i'm not sure if you guys heard about this or not but there's a channel out on youtube called kiss army we are one 
Okay. Yes, I've seen that. Mm-hmm. And they had three days ago. They put out leak kiss to release new anniversary edition of Alive Two, and the guy oh, went yeah. on there to say that he heard through a very reliable source that this is going to be out before the Creatures box set to come out. Hmm. That this is going to be the next thing that's going to come out, not the Creatures thing. So. Uh, I found that rather interesting because as he put on there, he said that there was a lot of things that they could possibly do with this because, you know, it was a big record for them. Uh, if they're to do a sort of deluxe box like they did with Destroyer for this, uh, the possibilities could be endless. You know, they could do God knows what with this. Uh, has any of you guys heard of this leak? Uh, what were your initial thoughts? Let's go to Lonnie first. You know, I think that's interesting. I don't... I don't... See... I see them doing, you know, an Alive 2 anniversary type treatment like we're getting from Revenge and Love Gun and mm-hmm. and The Greatest Kiss and some of the other ones we've gotten recently. I don't... I, I, I believe the creature thing is coming. I mean, we know the creature thing is coming. I don't see them... I don't see them celebrating Alive 2 in a super deluxe format before they celebrate Alive 1 in a super deluxe format. <laughs> I mean, I think that I think that's yeah, kind of strange. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think I think there will be some some alive to celebration stuff coming, but I don't think it's I don't think it's a deluxe box set necessarily. Yeah. So, Daniel, did you hear about this information, or is this new to you? No, I didn't hear it. But um, you can always hope that they put out a version with um, you know without the overdubs or something like that. But uh, as long as people keep on buying those colored plastic... Can to. Can to. Can to. Can to. They won't put that effort in, of course. Uh, I don't know how much more they sold of that Destroyer thing they, they released, because there they actually put in some efforts. So uh, if it didn't sell a whole lot more than the other stuff, why put in the effort? You know, mm. that's that's the way they 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 reason. That, that's a, that's an interesting point. I mean, I I don't know if that box that is I, I because I'm not really following that end of it. Uh, maybe you guys know, but I don't know if that box that is actually sold out or not. Uh, if it isn't, I don't then think that so, then that could yeah, be a think. a reason of concern. Maybe maybe not. Yeah. You know, it is an expensive box and it's worth the money. I think, and that's coming from me, who doesn't like Destroyer. So, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, Ken. Alive 2 is a huge record for you. You said from the beginning that this is one of the big records for you, and you've been the one kind of, you know, campaigning to have this album done in a deluxe form. What, what were your thoughts when you heard about this? Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me. Um, I mean, it took, well, it's what surprises me, it took them so, so long to do some kind of special, <laughs> some kind of release. Um, it's, they just kind of skipped over it um, and did the a number of number of other albums from the 70s um so yeah it's it's just gonna be like i'm guessing it's gonna be a maybe colored discs and plus i'm gonna assume it's gonna have picture discs too um uh of i don't know what they're gonna do but i I assume it's gonna have picture discs just like love is picture disc and a colored (laughs) And, and probably a lot of buttons and, you know, the other stuff that they put out, you know, there's t-shirts and whatnot. So I think that's, that's going to happen. But yeah, down the road, I would definitely want a, a live two deluxe edition at some point. And a deluxe, uh, or they might even get put out those, uh, you know, gold records or platinum records that awards that you can get there. That, you know, that I, I, yeah, I would be very interested in getting that. The award, yes, uh-huh. for sure. I think that's buy, an buy, buy a buy a spray can and buy an old <laughs> Elijah. <laughs> wow. Then, wow! Then you have your gold record right there. there wow! Look at that, Daniel Man. giving giving some ideas to the bootleggers of the world out there. You know? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so that's uh, that's what we have this week for the news segment of the program here. So let's go over to the main topic for this week. Now, as we approach the 20 year anniversary of the compilation, the very best of KISS, we decided to do our own sort of comparison or make our own version of it by pretty much putting together some of our favorite KISS songs 
voting on it. We compiled it. Well, actually, Lonnie put it together in a fantastic little sheet for us that I have here with the results. And uh, we will discuss our top 20 songs that would appear on such a record. Uh, but, but before we get started with that, how do you guys compare this compilation compared to other ones of similar style? Let's start with Ken. How do you rank this one up? compared to some of the other best dubs you know looking back at it um it wasn't it's, it's not that bad it's it's a pretty good selection of songs it covers really a good um period you know past psycho circus right um so i i thought it was a good compilation um i i know i bought it when <laughs> one of the many i stopped i think i didn't get every compilation but i definitely you know they had the one greatest Ki greatest kiss you know earlier that was a that was a real good one and then this one is is pretty close to that um, mm -hmm. and of course we've had other ones like smashes and thrashes before and and so on um, but yeah i think that one this one actually is you know stands up pretty well uh lonnie what what are your thoughts yeah it's a good mix i um i i like how it goes in chronological order. Um, mm, I, think it, yeah. I, think it, I think it was very good. I think it, it's really geared toward the Kiss fan who maybe doesn't have anything. Um, it's just just a sample size, just little snippets of the band um, from its inception all the way um, through. It's, it, they're pretty close to modern day, I guess. It, it, it doesn't have. It doesn't have Psycho Circus on it at the end or something like that, but I think it ends with God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Yeah. So I mean, right, it, it goes it goes pretty much through the the entire catalog of the band, just kind of just grabbing the hits as we go. I, it, it's it's a it, to me it, it, it's a great album to introduce someone to Kiss with, to kind of give them a taste of you know the, the raw early '70s and then you know little little tastes of the '80s all all the way through. Um, it, and it was fun at the time when it came out in 2002 also because there really wasn't anything going on at all. They had done this farewell mm -hmm. tour and without a farewell last show, we we're just kind of in a holding pattern of what's going on with this band, you know? And, and meanwhile, they couldn't even end the farewell tour without, I mean, with the original lineup, we had to have Eric come step in, you know, what's going on? Are we going to get a final show one day? We're just in limbo. So they put out this very best of kiss and like oh it, it was something at that point in time so i was <laughs> you know i was excited about it just the fact that it was something for my favorite band at the time. yeah absolutely uh daniel what are what are your thoughts i have to agree with what uh lon has said uh, if you were if you if, if you if you were a new fan it was a great album uh you got something from almost every album and there were good selections ah, i could have done could switch out a few like Gary Shoes, put something else on there, and a few others. But uh, overall, it was, they had put some thought behind this. Uh, but by this point, I think compilation albums had played out its role for for our, for the diehards, of course. Uh, but I do think that the album was quite a success for the band. I think it was probably the last Kiss album that went gold. I think. Really? Maybe, maybe uh, one of the right. last, at least, yeah. <clears throat> so, and of course, they look back in history, and you remember in the 80s, uh, Smashes, Thrashes, and yeah. Hits was a great, a huge success. I think it went double platinum or something yeah. in the US. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Even though that compilation is way worse, I think. They, oh, they, yeah. You know, they, they changed the sound <laughs> and... Uh, they changed the drums and the creature songs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, they did, uh, well, from what I remember, they didn't do a whole lot with the songs on <clears throat> the very best kiss, the very best of kiss, because it was for the new fans. Um, and I think it's one of the better compilations. Um, but I, I would pick Kiss Killers if if I if I would pick a favorite compilation. The, then you had a few new songs as well, but by the early 2000s, it was harder for them to come up with new songs. It seems so. I mean, if they would have put two or three new songs on that one, it would be really interesting for us as well. The diehards. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I mean, it is an interesting compilation when you look at it. I mean, Strutter, Deuce, Got to Choose, Hotter Than Hell, Come On, Love Me, Rock and Roll, Night, Detroit, Rock City, Shout It Out Loud, Beth, I Want You, Calling Doctor, Love, Hard Luck, Woman, I Stole Your Love, Christine, 16, Love Gun, New York Groove, I Was Made for Loving You, I Love It Loud, Lick It Up Forever, and God Gave Rock and Roll to You Too. So it's basically at least one or two from every record up to uh, Revenge. Now, uh, I, I think that Kiss, at that point, like you mentioned, really were at their wits end with compilations. There were so many out at that point. Uh, one of the ones I still love to this day is still Double Platinum. I have a soft spot for that one. But the one that I really enjoy, and ironically enough, if I ever want to get into a mood to listen to a best of, I don't remember if this is the correct title, but there was one that was called, I believe, uh, Kiss Gold or something like that. It yeah. was two mm-hmm. CDs. Oh, yeah. and, That's actually and it, really good. Yeah, and that one had at least same thing two or three songs from each album and it had a couple of songs from each of the solo records as well which i thought was really cool on that one mm-hmm. as well and it had on mass stuff and it had everything there. so i really enjoy taking that one out in the car when i have like a long trip or have had to go around most of the day driving i like bringing that one out because it is a very good re- re- like retrospective of their career so i, I like that one but you know, greatest greatest kiss uh, was of course released during the reunion, so it was a way yeah. for them to cash in. I remember friends going around buying that album, and I said, "Just buy double platinum. It's the same songs almost, <laughs> and it's half the price. And it's even because it's very similar to double platinum." Yes, exactly. So we <laughs> compiled our own lists for this, and mm-hmm. thank you to Lonnie for putting together the list for us and for doing the calculations and so on and so forth. And if I can just find it, here it is. Uh, We will go through the top 20 songs as voted by us for, uh, starting from number 20 to number one. Now, before we get to those ones, a couple of interesting points here. Um, There were about 45 songs that we picked Mm -hmm. from from this list, okay? Obviously, we're not going to talk about all of them. But it's interesting to p- point out a couple of them. For example, the ones that were that didn't make the list, uh, of those four songs, three of them were from the 80s, and there was one song from the 90s in mm-hmm. there as well that didn't make our top 20. Uh, songs like uh, King of the Nighttime World didn't make our top 20. Yes. Uh, songs like Naked City didn't make it on our top yeah, 20 they- list. <laughs> uh, fits like a glove. A heartbreak for Daniel. That oh, didn't no. make. No. That didn't make the top twenty. Oh, that that no, came Daniel. in with that came in with a whopping four points only. <laughs> only so, Daniel. <laughs> so only Daniel probably voted for that in the in the song. Uh, and huh. and the bottom ones, for example, both with just a singular point were Psycho Circus and Take It Off. So good songs, in, oh. interesting uh, hmm. bottom interesting yeah. selections. Any any thoughts on that? Uh, let, let's start with let's start with Daniel. Is, is it heartbreak time now that your song was so low on the list? Uh, not really. I, I wasn't uh, <laughs> <laughs> expecting that you guys would pick it, but uh, but the problem is they have so many great songs. Yeah. Yes. Tears are falling. One of my favorite songs didn't make the the top twenty. Uh, Come on, love me. One of my favorite songs didn't make the top twenty. I guess it did for Lonnie. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, a whole lot of good songs. Strutter didn't make the top twenty. So, uh, in conclusion, you have to say Kiss has done quite a few great songs because some of the ones that didn't make the list for me are ten out of ten songs. Um, and you know it's it's what mood you're in, and, and some of the yeah. songs can switch places, but but I think uh, the core of the list stays there forever. I mean, I have a few that I've always liked, always loved that uh, I wouldn't put uh, mm-hmm. anywhere else than the top twenty. But some towards the bottom can switch. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of excited to see which one is the number one Kiss song of all time. Yes, uh, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it will be Black Diamond, but I don't know. 
So no. let's go through this. Uh, there are there are twenty songs to talk about, so it might be you know good for us to go through this at a brisk pace. Maybe not too brisk, but you know not yeah. hang on to one song for too long. So starting in at twentieth position with a whole eighteen points. Okay, uh, is got to choose. Okay, mm. uh, now not a big surprise in my <clears throat> opinion. I mean, we're talking about the first three records. Uh, usually on that, those on those albums, a lot of people can point out songs that they really love from that album. Uh, any uh, surprises on "Got to Choose" to being number twenty? Let's start with Lonnie. Well, it, it, it's it's number twenty because I'm the only one who voted for it, and I gave it eighteen points. So, <laughs> <laughs> so very appropriately for throwing it to me, Mark. Um, I love Got to Choose. It's obviously one of my favorite Kiss songs ever. Um, maybe not necessarily on Hotter Than Hell. I think they really got it right on Alive. And actually, my favorite version of it is the Japanese bonus track from MTV Unplugged. I think that sounds absolutely incredible. Um, the acoustic guitars and the harmonic vocals on that performance of it is absolutely incredible and just for that performance alone i think is, is why it's so high but it does sound fantastic on the live as well so i'm the reason that we are talking about got to choose and it's one of my favorite kiss songs yes so ken thoughts yeah it's a great song um though it was not it was not my top 21 um but it is a great song and like daniel said there's so many songs too uh choose from uh, i chose a different song from hollow in hell uh, i hope i don't know if that made the list but it probably didn't but uh you know it again it's it's a good song i just like to say though uh, lonnie made me aware of a song that i excluded a classic we'll song that. that i excluded uh, yeah we'll, we'll get to that i'm sure um and and i and i had no you know i I really didn't want to remove it, and somehow, in moving all my songs in and out and moving things around, I knocked it off my list by accident. Oh. But hey, it is what as I said. Okay, well, we'll just leave it as it is. Um, <laughs> we'll see I'm what sure happens we'll when it gets it. there. Yes, Daniel, thoughts on "Got to Choose"? And my favorite song. I only put one song from from uh, "Harder Than Hell" on my list, actually, and it wasn't "Got to Choose." Uh, uh, I never got that one. I know it's Paul, one of Paul Stanley's favorites, uh, but I think Going Blind is a much stronger song from mm. Harder Than Hell. Interesting. Yeah, um, I don't remember if I put this on my list or not because I don't have my list in front of me because I'm using the master list right now. Uh, you didn't well, I did not. Okay. So, uh, but I do love this song. Um, it's one of the, actually one of the first songs I learned on guitar from hotter than hell believe it or not mm. uh so i do like the song but you know like t the problem with this list is going to be that there's so many amazing songs that is how do you pick this one and not choose this one but l let's go on to number 19 number 19 which also came in with 18 points but will rank higher i guess is god of thunder mm. now yeah. god this of is thunder, 18 point points because of daniel Okay. Give it 18 points. So there you go. See, this this is great that we have Lonnie here to, to, to point out the people who have done certain Damn things you. to the list here. This is fantastic. I'm very glad this is happening. No, we, oh. we can shame the right people during this list here. So, uh, so Daniel is responsible for God of Thunder being on this list. Now, when when you were voting for this, Daniel, were you thinking uh, Destroyer? Or were you thinking Alive Two? Or what version were you thinking of? Doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I love them all. I know some of you maybe don't care for the studio version, but I, I, I like the the voices from Bob Ezrin's children and, and stuff like that. I think it's a scary song. One of the first metal songs in uh, in history, maybe. I mean, it's uh, really heavy. And I loved it when I watched Kiss, uh, I don't know, is it a month now? Uh, a month back. Uh, it was so heavy. Uh, uh, and my favorite Gene song, I think, of all time, even though it's a Paul song. So uh, uh, I'm really disappointed in you guys that you didn't give it a single point. It's a disgrace. Oh, my Lord. Okay. 
But I had it in third place, actually. Or in fourth place, I had it on my list. Got it on. Interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, Lonnie, your thoughts? No, very good song. I mean, it, it was, it, it, it's a harder exercise than what you think to come, come up with your favorite 20 Kiss songs. Because you're getting down to 17, 18, 19, you're like, oh my gosh, how am I going to, how, how can I leave this song off? How can I leave that song off? Um, but, you know, had I, had I composed this list on a different night, I might have flipped a coin and, and felt differently and had God of Thunder on mine. But I can see why Daniel has it so high. I mean, it is, it's such a classic Kiss song, obviously, and it's just a staple when you go see him live, and it is, and it, and it works, and it just works live fantastically, like the classic Gene song. Yes. But Ken not having known his list, Mr. Gene. <laughs> Explain yes. yourself. Paul wrote. Paul, that, Paul wrote. So that's that's what I'm curious about. Whole, <laughs> yeah, he what, nixed it for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, I. You know, it. It was on my list, and it went off the list. I know it was on it uh, early, um, and then I just started going crazy you just and started picking random songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you look at my list, it's very <laughs> random. <laughs> It's very gene heavy too. It is. It is. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, if, and the other thing is, it's. I think part of it is, uh, you know, I, I've been listening to God of Thunder since you know seventy seven or whatever, and I've heard it forever, and I hear it forever in concerts, and you know, it's like I think it's just a matter of me a little bit tired of it, and uh, there's a lot of other songs out there that I, I, I want to hear instead. Uh, that they've done so that's what it comes down to yeah that's a that's that's a good response to that i think that's the, a lot of it for me as well i mean uh i i don't mind god of thunder in a live capacity like on the live albums i think they're they're good uh even when i saw them like in the 2000s i thought whenever they did play it it sounded really cool i cannot stand the destroyer version of it it just makes me want to pull my hair out it's like Shocking. those stupid kids <laughs> Like shut up, God! I can't Scary. stand here. You know, Damien, Damien. They they do not belong on a, a song like that. Just a, oh, just yes, just my opinion. Do. Okay. Have it. So, I didn't vote for it. Uh, so, I don't think I voted for it. Yeah. No, no. Okay. So next <laughs> up, uh, in the eighteenth place, we have a true classic amongst the Kiss fans, I'm sure, uh, and that is with twenty points, we have Parasite. Yeah. from Potter and Hell. Now, of course, this is an Ace Freely classic, one of the earliest songs that he wrote for the band. You know, of course, you have, you know, Cold Gin before that, but Parasite is a very early song in his writing stage here. Uh, so what do you think, Ken? Parasite, 20 points. Yeah, it was on my list. <laughs> that one was on my list. It, it was on there for a short period of time, and then I knocked it off with another song uh, from, Not on from that album. So... <laughs> Because so, I knew Daniel would pick it. No, not, that's not a reason. So um, <laughs> of, the 20, of the 20 points, sorry, Ken, I'll let you continue in a second, but I'm just yeah, curious, yeah, Lonnie, yeah. Who, who are the people that voted for this? Of the 20 points, Daniel gave it 14, and I gave it 6. Okay. okay. So continue, Ken. Yeah, and I gave it 0, I guess. <laughs> Though I think it's, I, I, again, it should, it should be on here, um, but it isn't. It just isn't on my list. I, I lo actually, I love the song. But I love these other songs too, so it is what it is. <laughs> Lonnie, I give it six points. I love the I love that riff. I just love that Ace Frehley riff, and I and I love the solo. Um, and I you know I, I had the song going higher than hell, and then I got um that Kiss My Ass Home video, mm. and it was and that and there was a live version of it on there. I guess it's from. I guess it's from San Francisco 74 maybe or yeah black and white San Francisco mm. show and it just sounds so heavy on there wow and I, I always liked the song but I fell in love with that song um, because of that kiss my ass home video when I was about 14 years old seeing that for the first time so um, and I knew Daniel would have it high on his list because he's sung its praises multiple times on the show so Daniel tell us why you have it at 14 I think you uh, had some uh, good comments there. It's all about the riff, I think. Uh, I, I think it's it's my favorite Ace Frehley song of, of all time. Um, and Mark, you talked about Got to Choose was one of, of the first songs you learned to play on guitar. 
uh, <clears throat> this one was one of my first songs and you could make it sound so heavy and cool without being in the Malmsteen yes. um, you know uh, it's not just the main riff I love, I love uh, the part you know I think it's the bridge do do de, do do de, yeah. de, do 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 that's pretty f- cool as well <laughs> and as Lonnie said the solo I know Ace Frehley often says that this is his favorite uh, Kiss solo uh, sometimes he forgets and, and says something else, but most of the time he says the the solo f- from Parasite is his favorite, and I do think it's a awesome, awesome solo. So I, I, I'm I'm glad it made the list. Yes, <laughs> it, it is definitely a a very strong song from the Ace Freely side of things, writing wise. And that would have been interesting to hear how it would have turned out if he actually would have tried to sing it back in the day. But I I, I like it. Mm with Gene seeing it. I think he has the I think he has the right voice for it and it gives it that kind of extra little edge and heaviness to it that it deserves. So next up in 17th spot with a whopping 21 points, we got a Paul Stanley classic. Come on and love me. Mm-hmm. So Lonnie, what what are the, the votes on this? It's 21 points from Lonnie. And that's why it has 21 points. <laughs> and it, it appears on no one else's list but mine. But it's my favorite Kiss song. I've said that multiple times on the show that despite Revenge being my favorite Kiss album, um, Come On and Love Me is my favorite Kiss song. Hmm. Um, it's just a fun, it, it's, to me, it just sums up what Kiss is all about. It's just a fun song, um, cheesy lyrics, Paul Stanley singing, great guitar work, just great sound from that entire band. When, when I feel that band was like really hitting its stride, the band was really hitting its stride more than anything else about that Dress to Kill era, you know, and then obviously a lot comes out after that and they take off. But to me, Come On and Love Me just epitomizes everything that, that Kiss is about. It's just it's just fun. It, it's cheesy at the same time, but it's also a great song. Um, so it's my favorite Kiss song. It got 21 points and the rest of you don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I I don't. I, that's not true for me. I, I really I'm like the song, and, and I also actually I'll say this on the the version that's on double platinum. <clears throat> that they have a kind of stripped down where there's more acoustic guitar in the mix than the original version, and that to me shows how good that song is because even in a more stripped down acoustic guitar driven version of that song, it's still a fantastic song, and I've always thought it was like a pop masterpiece by Paul Stanley. What do what do you think, uh, Daniel? What, what's your thoughts on this song? I think Paul Stanley had quite a few songs that's pretty similar on the Dress to Kill, and I love all of them. Uh, I think I've heard Come On and Love Me a bit more than the the rest of the, well, you know, like Room Service and Lover All I Can. So I actually put Lover All I Can in, uh, in uh, the 20th position. Uh, I don't think it will make the list. but uh, And I had... Come on and love me, but it dropped and it's down at twenty. It's it's my twenty sixth favorite kiss <laughs> song. So that's pretty good. I'd give it five out of five. You know, it's a awesome awesome song. Ken, yeah, it's a great song. It, it barely missed my list. I mean, I chose it at one point. I know, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it is a great you know, pop perfection type written song. Um, so I, I can see why at least one of us uh, to, chose it, you know, for the list. Yes, I agree. Um, next up in the list, and the, this is one that I was surprised I actually made the list because I thought for sure that this era wouldn't be looked upon too favorably. Uh, but coming in at 24 points. We got Mr. Paul Stanley warming up to pipes at the beginning. Whoa! Mm. With the good old heavens on wow, fire. That, that's, pre- that's pretty good. Pretty good, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, he- Heavens on Fire is one of the songs that honestly, when I was younger, my sister got the 45. She brought it home and I put it on. I was like, wow, what the hell is that? Like, I was sitting there in her room listening to it over and over and over again. And it really hit hit me in all the right place i thought it was cool very catchy chorus you know the the production was pretty slamming for that time so I, i've always been a 
excuse me, I've always been a fan of it. And uh, Lonnie, what is the breakdown of this song? The breakdown of the 24 points is Mark with eight and Daniel with 16. So, Daniel, tell us why 16 points for Heaven's yeah. on Fire. Well, it was actually my number one song for a very long time. So it's dropped to number six now. Um, I've just heard so many times, but it was my ticket to kiss. You know, I remember hearing it in a tent when I was 10 years old and uh, it grabbed me immediately and uh, I never looked back. So that was what that's what made me a Kiss fan. So it's very important to me personally. And it's a great nice. song. Nice. Lonnie, what, what's 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 the deal with you? Well, I didn't pick it, but I uh... <laughs> I do here? like Heavens on Fire. <laughs> Animalize was one of the first albums I owned that I think I personally owned. My brother had Destroyer and Creatures, and I think the second album I owned, I, I think I, I had Love Gun, and I think I had Animalize. So Animalize is one of the first, one, well, you know, one of, still part of my introduction to Kiss. And Heavens on Fire just, you know, I, I, I didn't know. I'm so, I was young listening to it. I didn't know Heavens on Fire was a single or a, even a video or anything like that but the song like, you know you you can you can tell what a good song is and what 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 some of the filler stuff is and i was like wow that's really good um you know and i, I probably wore my my cassette tape out listening to to that like re, you know going back and listening to i've had enough and listening to heavens on fire just that one two punch mm -hmm. from animals i probably wore that cassette out <laughs> it, was, it was so good so no, I, it was tough to keep that off my list. But Ken, Ken, you have it on. No, Ken, you do not have it on yours either. I did not. So why it. not, Ken? Hold you accountable. Yes. It's another one where I did have some uh, non-makeup hits on on the uh, my list, and I they just ended up being removed by a, another song I just inserted. So it just is what it is. Um, it's another great song. I'm not going to, you know, lie about it. It's just a song that maybe I've heard too much. <laughs> That's why it gets pushed down a little bit. Yes, I, I, I agree. This is usually what's the, the reasoning behind these selections and where they appear. Now, in 15th spot, we have a song that has probably some of Gene Simmons' finest lyrical work ever, talking about a 92 year old man and we're talking about uh, going blind at 24 <clears throat> points uh we yes. know that uh daniel was secretly hoping for this one are you pleased with the result daniel and what's the breakdown lonnie with the votes daniel with eight and ken ken with 16 but ken says in parentheses the unplugged version of going blind he's yeah. partial to that. they're all good but yeah that's the best one <laughs> yes so daniel what what, what what's your take um, I guess it's sort of a ballad, but uh, it still is. It still works, uh, you know, when they play live in concert. Uh, and I think the vocals on this one uh, is just—they're just great. I mean, one of the best sung songs by Gene. I mean. When you hear his, can still do it to this day. He, he can sing it so much with, with emotion, and you know <laughs> the lyrics are uh, kind of strange at times. But uh, it's also a fun song to play uh, on the guitar. Uh, so my favorite song of of Harder Than Hell, but it it wasn't in the beginning. I think also MTV Unplugged what was when I you know opened my eyes and, and saw this song. I hadn't really thought about it before that. And also I remember they that Kiss played it in 93 live on that um, you know Foundations Forum show. And it hit me like, whoa, can they do this song live this good? Uh, so it became a favorite pretty late for me, but uh, I love it. OK, so how about uh, Lonnie? What's your thought? I like going blind. It's it, it's different. Um, I think I, I will echo what, what Daniel said, and Ken's probably going to say as well when he talks about it because he did specify that he likes that unplugged version. <laughs> it was kind of a throwaway for me for a long time until MTV Unplugged came out. 
Um, and I Actually, I, I just have to say one thing. I, th I don't think it was MTV Unplugged that changed my mind. It was that time they played it on MTV. Just Paul, Paul and Gene, Gene on, they were sitting on oh, stools, most wanted, right? Most wanted. I remember that. Night. Yeah, that was that, was, that so, was really cool. Good. No. Um, but I, I think I got a greater appreciation for it um, from MTV, um, MTV Unplugged. It was more of a throwaway for me for a long time until then. Same thing with Coming Home, which was a tough one to leave off on my list, too, because if I, if I were to vote with, for Coming Home, I would have said the MTV Unplugged version as well, because that's another song that oh, was just kind of a throwaway song off of, of Hotter Than Hell for me for a long time. And now, you know, it, it's higher. It's much higher on my list because I really I really like that song. But but Ken Ken gives it 16 points. So tell us why. Ken. Yes. Yeah, I just think it's a great song. And like Daniel said, it's, it's a it's different or maybe you said it, Lonnie, is, you know, it's a different type of song. It's not your standard song. It's not necessarily a ballad. It's kind of a ballad. It's, if you go on Hotter Than Hell, it's kind of like a power ballad in a way. Um, but then when it became Unplugged, and and like Daniel said that, I guess it was Most Wanted, I, I, I remember watching it on TV when they played. I was like, wow, this is just, just the two of them playing uh, this song was just, amazing and then their harmonies you know uh it, it was just like wow this is just new life into the song so yes i you know ever since then more so uh, i i've loved it and then unplugged they did it there and that was great too so always loved it it's gonna be high on my list fantastic so that was number 15 in our list coming in at number 14 is another Ace Freely classic. Ooh. I mean, his first classic, in fact, we're talking about Cold Gin. So hmm. we know that uh, this one is going to be high amongst us Ace Freely fans. Uh, I'm not sure what I did with my vote on this, but I know I've really loved that song. In fact, I was thinking about covering it once for one of my records as part of a bonus track. I haven't done that one yet. I've done many Kiss songs, but not that one yet. And one day I will get around to uh, Cold Gin. But Cold Gin, 24 points. Lonnie, what's the breakdown of the uh, wow. voting on this? Someone had it high. And oh, no, Lonnie's no, no. frozen. Oh. And oh, no. Lonnie's gone. So, so much Lonnie for the breakdown. <laughs> So the breakdown is not going to be present here. You can say, uh, if, you, if you voted for it, you could say you voted. Because I know I did not uh, vote for that one, believe it or not. So did you vote for this one, Daniel? Yes, I did. Number 12 on my list. Um, ah. Once again, a true, fairly classic. Once again, a great riff, m much like Parasite. And uh, I just never get tired of this one. And I've think it works well live as well and even though audiences might not know the song they always get into it uh, somehow so so it, it has something you know it, it has that something special and and according to my list which i finally found here i gave it a uh, number eight eight points hmm. on here for for it as well so <clears throat> obviously i had it pretty high up on my list. So, what about you, Ken? What's what's your feelings on Cold Gin? Yeah, it's, it's a great song. It's one of my you know <laughs> more favorite songs, but it's again not on the list. But uh, it it's a classic that you know it sometimes does need to be played live um, to appreciate it more um, than it is on the, you know the first album, for instance. It it is better live. So, uh, mm -hmm. and then they do their little choreography. Uh, they used to do yeah. with that song too, so that that always helped on the live version. But yeah, great song. I I, I don't have any you know reasons to say it shouldn't be, but uh, it wasn't on my uh, twenty twenty one list. Yes. So coming in at number thirteen, we have our next song. Now this is one that's a little bit up the uh, discography. It's not part of the first three albums. And of course, there's another Paul Stanley song. In the morning, I hold my. So it's I want you oh, yeah. from Rock and Roll Over. Uh, this comes in with 25 points. Uh, I'm gonna check here really quickly if I voted for it, and I did not vote for it at all. So, who amongst us here voted for it? Did you vote for it, Daniel? And did you vote for it? Let's see, Daniel. Let's start with you. 
Number 17 on my list. Uh, I fell in love with this song when I when they played it as an encore during the Heart in the Shade tour. I got a hold of those Detroit concerts and just hearing that encore on the Heart in the Shade tour was uh, mind blowing. Uh, and that was when I rediscovered the song and it's always been a favorite uh, ever since. Great. So let's go over to Lonnie since we have Lonnie back here. We are on I Want You. Mm-hmm. So I think you might have missed out on Cold Gin. You want to give you a quick thought on Cold Gin? Um, Cold Gin received votes from, hold on, I'm pulling back the spreadsheet back up here. Mm-hmm. But Cold Gin received votes from Mark with 14 and yes. Daniel with 10 for the 24. Uh, Cold Gin's a good song. I love the riff on to it. I love the riff on it. Just kind of, you know, very, very Ace Fairly like with the riff. Um, very, sta- very, what makes an Ace Fairly song an Ace Fairly song? You're just so, just riff heavy than anything else. Um, but definitely, but definitely a great, but definitely a great song. Um, I Want You, I Want You just works so well live. And I wish that the band could still play it live and, you know, We've all seen the band live recently, or, or heard the band live, live recently. And unfortunately, with um, the band in their seventies now, it just it just doesn't have it doesn't have. And I think the band knows it just wouldn't have it just wouldn't work anymore. Um, but when they did bring it back, like in 03 and 04, and they were playing it again, like oh, it was so cool because what it was so cool because it was just a different song in the set list for crying out yeah. loud. They were playing the same damn thing for years mm-hmm. and years and years during the reunion tour. Um, the fact that they just had one different song in 03 when they came through there also was, 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 was satisfying enough for me. Um, I Want You is very high on Ken's list with 20 points. And, uh. it's, and it's on Daniel's list as well with five points. But, um, you know, we, we talk about first impressions of the band and lasting impressions of the band. And I know, you know, Ken, your first impression of the band was Rock, rock and Roll Over. Hence why it, it, it's so high on yours. That's definitely understandable. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, yeah, for me, it was number two on my list um, for those reasons. And one of the reasons is, well, it's a great song, first of all. Uh, it starts off, you know, acoustic, and, and then it comes in and blasts you in the face after that. <laughs> um, um, and that is the song that, when I was over at my friend's house, he says, listen to this, he put it on. And th- that's what started it all for me. Um, he put it on, and you know, again the acoustic, and then it kicks in. I was like, "What? I was like, what is that? You know, this is this is you know really interesting. It's cool." Um, and uh, it turned out to be you know rock and roll over the beginning of rock and roll over. And it's like ever since then, uh, I was uh, you know been hooked. So, um, and that was you know long back in 1977. So. Um, Great song, always like it, always want to hear it. My best version for me is on Rock and Roll Over. Nice, nice. So next up is our number 12 selection. And this song got 25 points. And it's not a big surprise in my opinion. It is one of their more popular singles, I think, overall. And uh, uh, even considering that it's coming from a record that I despise, personally, uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not surprised that it's as high as it is because I'm pretty sure I even voted for it and that is shout it out loud mm-hmm. so uh, what's the breakdown with this one it's the first song that all four of us have on our list wow. uh, Mark with one point Daniel with one point um, Ken with 19 and I have it for four all four of us voted for shout it out loud for the total of 25 points fantastic so let's start with Daniel what's your thoughts on shout it out loud I don't know what's left to say about Shout Out Loud. It, it's just a classic Kiss song. Mm, I like the, uh, you know, Gene and Paul taking turns singing it. It has always worked perfectly live. Uh, still to this day, um, they did it during the non-makeup era, at least towards the Revenge era, and it was awesome. And in the beginning, of course, it was great as well. Uh, just one of those songs that you can't. You know, uh, stay stay away from because it grabs you. Uh, it's a perfect party song. Very nice, Lonnie. 
Yeah, if you're gonna have a, a greatest hits of, of Kiss, shouting out loud has to be included. It's it's just a staple song. You you look forward to it when 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 you go and see the band live. It, it has to be played and usually played pretty early on just to get the crowd fired up and 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 going. So I mean, it's 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 four on it. I I gave it four points, but I mean, it, it, I I couldn't leave it off my list for those reasons. Exactly. And Ken. Yeah, I've always loved this uh, song, and it's it's the anthem that I haven't gotten sick of <laughs> yet. I mean, very well said. It was just kind of trying to redo it, uh, you know, rock and roll all night, um, do another anthem, and I think they hit they hit it, you know, the nail on the on the head there with this one. Um, you know, the especially with you know the always love the trade off, you know, vocals uh, between between Gene and Paul, because you don't get a lot of that. Uh, but whenever it happens, it's it's really a special thing. And they should have done a lot more of it, in my opinion, <laughs> on, mm-hmm. on songs, but they didn't. So great song, catchy. Like Dana said, great party song, for sure. Absolutely. So now we're at an interesting point in the list. We're at number 11. So the last song before we hit the top 10, uh, this song is... Uh, a fav- one of my favorite songs for sure and it comes from my favorite non-makeup album Asylum and I'm very happy that it got as high as it did at, at the number 11 position and with 28 points we have King of the Mountain so Lonnie what's the mm-hmm. breakdown with King of the Mountain? Breakdown King of the Mountain is Mark with 17 and Daniel with 11 for the 28 points Asylum guys yep yeah, so Daniel further thoughts on King of the Mountain uh, perfect song. Um, I love I love the intro by Eric Carr. I always liked the drum intros on Kiss songs. Like I love it loud and and, uh, and this one. Um, they didn't do it too often, uh, but the drum intro and of course Paul's vocals. Uh, I like the lyrics, especially when you were a teenager. Um, I'm just sad they didn't do it a whole lot live. They tried it a few times. And then they never played it again. Yeah. So that's uh, really uh, bad. <laughs> yeah, Lonnie. Any reason why you didn't pick this? Um, because it's 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 tough picking your favorite twenty one kiss songs. <laughs> that's why I didn't pick it. Um, but I like King. Of, I like King of the Mountain, and I and I knew it would be represented well by by several members of the panel. Um, but. It's good. I, I like I like working out to King of the Mountain. It's a good get you fired up type song and really get your blood pumping and, and get you going. But just couldn't crack my top twenty one, unfortunately. Yes, Ken. Yeah, I hate the song. No, not really. It's wow. it's great. You know? <laughs> wow. It's no, I love the song. It's it's a it's a good, <laughs> good great song. Like Daniel was saying with the drum intro and all that. Um, you know, it's one of those actually that. Well, Asylum didn't even make my list, believe it or not. Um, uh, any song from there, though it almost did, and I think it fell off the list again. But uh, yeah, I, I can see why it's been it's chosen. It's a great lead-off song on that album. Really good, hard rock and tune. Um, always good to hear it. So um, yeah, nothing to say bad about it. All right. So now we're coming into the top ten, and now. Coming in at number 10 with 33 points is a song that I remember the very first time I heard this song, I was like, whoa, that guitar riff is fucking really heavy. And then I realized that it was also the entrance music for one of my favorite wrestlers in ECW at the time named Taz. And he used to come in all the time to the ring with War Machine. Uh And I loved that song. And I always thought it was a really cool, heavy song. You know, what a way to close off Creatures of the Night. So what's the breakdown for this, Lonnie? Well, Mark, despite you loving the song, you gave it zero points. And <laughs> That's <Daniel> too good. <laughs> ranked it the highest with 17, <laughs> Ken with 5, and that me with 11. Well, there you go. See, I mean, <laughs> that just goes to show you that we can change where our positions of the songs are day to day, right? It's true. So let let let's start this time off with Lonnie. What what what's your thoughts on War Machine? So 
I, I have War Machine with 11, well, midway through my list. I, I love I love the song. Like, for the same reasons Mark was talking about, I, I just love that guitar of how, 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 I love how dark that song is, how heavy it is, and the lyrics. And I always said, if I was a major, if I would have, I always said, when I was a kid, if I was grew up to be a major league baseball player, you know, like every baseball player, they always come up to like a little, little theme music when they come up. That would have been, you know, it's like a game me and my brothers always play. We still play this to this, to this day. Like, what, what song would you come up to if you were, you know, a major league baseball player? I, I always answer that I would come up to War Machine. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think it, I think it's perfect. And, you know, I can see what, you know, I remember when Taz used to come out to, to War Machine as well back in the ECW days. So it, it's, it's one of my favorite songs. And I, I'm pleased that um, in 04, they brought it back into the set list. And it's basically remained there almost ever since. So um, I, I, I really like the song. So I, it's definitely one of my favorites. Okay, let's go to Ken. Yeah, it's on my list, definitely. Um, I think, you know, it could have been higher on my list, but I think there's no rhyme or reason to <laughs> almost to my, <laughs> what order I had to have them. And well, there is a rhyme or reason, but some of it isn't, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah classic first time i heard that when i first got creatures I, I was like this is just an awesome riff you know cool song you know and then they had the tank and all that kind of stuff to go with the war machine you know it was just it's just a classic song and i i can see why they still play it live so great great song yes daniel i'm a five for me and uh, you guys said it all i mean i agree with everything you said but uh, uh if you could take some time away from watching baseball and wrestling, you would have known. You would have known that it was the song for Thomas Holmstrom, one of the wingers in Detroit uh, Red Wings during the 90s, when he stepped up on the ice. You know the starting oh, really? lineup. He had War Machine. Oh really? Yeah. Eh? Intro song. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. Very interesting. I, that, that, that's a good point. See, some we, you can always pick up some good quiz. Uh, material here off of this show so thank you daniel for that little bit of kiss trivia there okay so next up we have the number nine song so now we're getting to the real meat and potatoes of the list um this song has 35 points it's on the second album hotter than hell and it was a song that i really liked the first time i heard it uh it was even on their original demo that they did but my favorite version of this song is actually on a live three i really love the way they played this on a live three and that's watching you mm -hmm. so what's the breakdown with this lonnie watching you breakdown is mark with 12 ken with 18 and me with five so ken very high on your list yeah yes. th this is the one that you know i had i was thinking of a song from hotter than hell i wanted to pick you know i i was trying not to pick more than one or two songs you know from from the albums so um i think parasite was on it then i was like oh no and then i i love watching you i love hearing watching you i love loved it when i saw it i think when uh you know rock the nation tour um they came around and was doing it then i was like i was so surprised they were doing it it's like wow this is awesome you know uh classic cool riff by gene uh, you know well-written song and uh yeah we're watching you you're watching us and that sort of stuff so it, it was cool i love it yes lonnie um very good song i i love the live one version it's my favorite song it's my favorite go-to version of it i i just love the way that 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 riff just starts off the second side of of a live one um it's, it's so you know it's so good and and they played on the reunion tour for a little while too um and they they, they played when they played here and i was really enjoyed it um love 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 gene singing that song and um heard him play it live several times so it's it's just it's classic hits uh daniel zero points for me <laughs> yeah uh, because i have a kind of a love-hate relationship to this song mm. uh, when the revenge tour ended uh, we all knew that Live 3 was coming out. And looking at the set list, you know, uh, War Machine, uh, Parasite, 
uh, Tears Are Falling, Oh My, I can't wait to hear what these songs sound like live with this lineup on a live three. And none of the songs made the album. And instead they put Watching You on the album. And I felt it was just such a throwaway because they already had the perfect <coughs> version on a live one. Mm. Uh, they didn't need to do it once again. And why did they leave off like Tears Are Falling War Machine? Uh, they weren't on the live two or one, so I always kind of hated the song just because of that. But I guess it's a pretty good song. Yeah. <laughs> interesting, interesting, uh, interesting reason to not like a song to have a love hate with it. So again, some interesting information, Daniel. Thank you for that. Um, number eight. Now, here's one that I think is going to be absolutely no surprise to anybody. Maybe somebody might think that it should have been higher up in the list, but I think it's about right, in my opinion. Let's see what you guys think when we get to this one. At 35 points, we have one of Paul Stanley's true gems, the one that he wrote on the airplane coming back from Japan, and we're talking about Love Gun. So what's the breakdown for Love Gun? Love Gun is Mark with 15, Daniel with 12, Lonnie with eight and Ken with zero. No love. Oh, love uh, All right, so let's go to the man who gave it, gave it zero. Why the zero, Ken? So I've heard it so, uh, you know, again, it's it's like I've heard it so many times. Yes, it's a great song. Uh, and I probably like, you know, I like to hear it in concert. But it's, it's just, I, I'm tired of it. And then when I was thinking of songs I wanted on my list to hear or put on the list, I chose... <laughs> oh, man, I'm tired of it. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Get off, Get off yeah, my That's list. about it, yeah. <laughs> Get love going off my lawn, you know. So, yeah, you know, come on. It's a great song. It's just not, it's just barely off my list, really. Um, just like the other song will, I'm sure, come to. <laughs> um... um it's just I don't know it's a great song that's all I can say it's not on my list and it is again what it is yes I think so, I, I hit more on you know Gene songs I was you know yeah. that I tend to lean towards you know yes that's true so Lonnie uh, Love Guns is classic kiss again you know and I think that's going to be a theme I think moving forward with a lot of these songs is Paul Stanley really at his best? Like I remember, like uh, like when Sonic Boom and Monster were coming out, like Paul Stanley saying, like I couldn't write a song like Love Gun again if you put a you know literally put a gun to my head. I mean, it's 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 so good, and I, I love it when they play it live and the fireworks that coincide with it. Um, it's just great. It's just one. It's one of those songs that it's the reason why we love this. Why we love this band, Daniel. Yeah, it's just a classic Kiss tune, but. Uh... In later years, I really enjoyed. <laughs> Have you seen that clip from from the movie Role Models when a guy explains oh. how smart Paul Stanley is? <laughs> yes, yes. For when he wrote that song, uh, I don't know how, how how you can sing it. I mean, if English was my first language, and you sang Love Gun like that, doesn't it seem kind of strange to you? Uh, <laughs> if I would translate it into Swedish, and I would have one of the biggest bands over here singing that in Swedish I would kind of wow but when it's your second language it, it doesn't work like that but <laughs> I just yeah. belting out love gun all the time ah, it's kind of kind of fun <laughs> interesting well that, that's another example of how sometimes a meaning of a word in one language is something different or looked at differently in, in another language so a very very interesting see we always learn something fascinating with daniel with these kind of little informational bits here um coming in at number seven is a gene simmons song believe it or not uh and this is a song that i've always loved uh i i always think of the three stooges uh when i think of this song for some reason uh well i'll explain but uh, my favorite version of this, or actually not my favorite, but one of my favorite versions of it is when they did Sonic Boom and they did the, that CD of the re-recordings of it. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't mind. It's no this... one's favorite version of it. No, no, but that's not my favorite. But it's it's, one, it's a version I didn't actually mind because it, it because they used more modern gear. It it sounded a little bit more, give it a bit more of a heavier edge to it from the original. Now the reason why I think of Three Stooges is because. 
in one of the Three Stooges uh, segments, they have a thing where it's like calling Dr. Fine, calling oh, Dr. Yeah, Howard. Yeah. Call... So that reminded me right away of Dr. Love. And I think that's what also inspired Gene Simmons to write calling Dr. Yeah. Love. So what's the breakdown for this? Breakdown. Mark has it really high on his list with 16, as does Ken with 17. I gave it three, and Daniel gave it zero. Ooh. Whoa. No love for Dr. Love. No love. Okay, let's go to Daniel. What, what's going on here? Uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of a cool song, but I don't think it has anything that really stands out. You know, it's like a simple four-chord song. Uh, but some people like it that way. I prefer, like, you know, Parasite, Cool Riff, uh, or Cold Gin, a Cool Riff, or War Machine, or God of Thunder. Actually, when I look at my list, they're really riff, uh, um, how should I say this? Riff-centric? Yeah, riff-centric. Uh, uh, all of the top ten are riff-centric, so I guess that's one issue for me, when it's all chords through the whole song. Uh but, but it's a cool song. All right. Lonnie. <laughs> Calling Dr. Love. It's good. I mean, I, uh, I have it on my list. It's cool. I, lo- I really like Ace's guitar solo on it. Yeah. And I just think that mm-hmm. that Love Gun version of it works so well that, you know, it's good when they play it live, but I think that it's one of the, it's one of the Kiss songs that they really got it right on the studio record. Where yes. you know a lot of these songs we talk about, oh, I really like this version. Oh, I really like that version. Um, what um, do you mean the Love Gun version? I do like the Love Gun version. No, you mean the Rock and Roll Over no, version. No, no, I'm no. sorry, I'm sorry, calling Doctor. <laughs> oh, I, did you I, call yourself a kiss? Are, are you on? Get out of here! Right now. I got, I got a lot going on here. With, um, <laughs> call, no, calling Doctor Love is the song I was thinking of. They really got it right on, on Rock and Roll Over. Um, it just sounds. Sounds good on there. Like we're talking about. Oh, I like yeah. this version of watching you live. Or oh, I like going blind this version. But the studio version of, of calling Doctor Love with Ace's guitar solo is is perfection, really. Yeah, Ken. Well, Gene perfected the song. You know, he did bad, bad loving and all these other <laughs> songs. He finally yeah. got it down to you know calling Doctor Love and and I, I you know sometimes. Uh, Dan, you say riffs, but it's it's such a great simple riff that's catchy yeah. that that works. I, I don't know that that works for me. I like both type types of riffs. Uh, if a riff is a you know a good riff, it's a, it's good. But um, yeah, the solo like the solo is just one of the one of the best uh, Ace Frehley solo you know solos on record. It's just a fantastic solo, and that's what always stood out to me. Um, at the you know when I first heard it so and it's one of it's probably my first favorite song when I got into Kiss so that's another reason why it's really so high yeah that that guitar solo actually I think was voted as probably one of the best Kiss guitar solos of all time it was in the top five I know for sure of this it's one list great I saw solos, yeah. yeah definitely now we're on to number six so we're one away from the top five uh, this song is just an absolute barn burner. I love this song. It's a great opening song. Um, it's on an album that had quite a bit of difficulty being made. Uh, who knows who played on what? Uh, I think we know who played the solo on this song. I think it was Robin Ford, I believe it was. They said, I don't remember, uh, or Steve Ferris. But uh, we're Steve talking Ferris. about at 46 points, we're talking about Creatures of the Night. Yeah, Steve Ferris our, was that. Yeah, one? Steve Ferris. So what's the breakdown for Creatures? Christian's the night mark with 11 Daniel with 19 I have it with 16 Ken no love for creatures in the night oh my god see this is this is typical uh, uh, hate for Paul Stanley when you when you're saying that you I just hate uh, when, when when you keep accusing us of hate of Gene Simmons <laughs> you're showing Gene. your hate of Paul Stanley here so let's go to let's go to Ken yeah, it's, I, well, first of all, I knew you guys all would choose that, so I thought it's going to get on the list, so I'm going to do put one of my songs that I like wow. on the list. So, uh, I mean, that's part of the reason. Actually, there's another song that I'm surprised I didn't put on my list. That's another Paul Stanley song, a lead-off song for the next album um, that I like better than Creatures of the Night. 
I, I like Exciter better than Creature. That's just me, but uh, that's what I would have put in, over Creature of the Night. But it didn't make the list. Yeah, I got a lot of Gene, heavy Gene stuff going on here. Yes, Daniel. Um, for me, it's the heaviest Paul Stanley song of all time. I think um, maybe in competition with uh, I've Had Enough Into the Fire and One or Two. Exciter is a heavy one as well. Um, uh, I uh, enjoy this one, the studio version, perfect, and the Alive 3 version I think is a great one as well. So just perfect, heavy Paul Stanley song. Yes, Lonnie. Well, I love creatures. I just, I just love the drum intro and the guitar just screeching in, and it's, it's so dark, so heavy. I was so glad when they brought it back when they were playing in Vegas back in '14, and it was the first time they had played it in so long. Um, I just love the song. Paul Stanley's vocals are just incredible on it. Um, the band just sounds great. Eric's drumming. It's just it's it's just fantastic. So it, it, I had to rank it really high. Great. We're on to the top five. These are the top five songs that we picked for this list. So coming in with 49 points, we have, and Ken will be very happy to hear this, a Gene <laughs> Simmons masterpiece. Uh, and it's, and one of the rare songs from the 1990s that we have on this oh, high okay. of the list here. Uh -huh. And of course, it was written by another great songwriter, Mr. Vinnie Vincent. Uh, and that song is Unholy. So what's the breakdown for Unholy? So Unholy gets 19 points from Mark, 7 from Daniel, 3 from Ken, and 20 from me. I knew, it'd be high, I knew Lonnie's would have to be the top one. Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you knew it'd be in my top five, at least for sure. Oh, yeah. It's actually my number two. Um, so all five of us voted for Unholy. I mean, no, no surprise that I have Unholy so high on my list as much as I talk about revenge on this show and how much I love revenge. Well, how can I love revenge so much and not have the best song arguably from revenge um, near at the top of my list. Unholy is fantastic. It's fantastic songwriting from Gene and Vinny. Um, for, you know, the, everything about it is great. It, it was just Kiss returning back to a darker, more metal type band. Um, the video for it, just everything about that song it just, just makes it stand out. Um, when uh, if I if I play that for someone, they're they're surprised that it is Kiss because yeah, they they have a much different opinion of what Kiss is and it's very poppy and anthemy that it's not dark and and dirty and heavy and, and just screeching the way it is and it's Gene singing too because most people have um oh, you know although Gene sings the most popular Kiss song there is but um most people have Paul Stanley's vocals in mind when they think about Kiss as well, especially, you know, someone my age who grew up in the 80s. So, um, unholy for me, un undoubtedly, um, near the top of my list. All right. Daniel. Um, yeah. Um, I have to second Lonnie there. Um, perfect comeback song from Kiss. Unfortunately, it was, uh, they didn't really have another song or revenge that was this good they had a few good ones take it off and so on but uh this was just 10 out of 10. Uh, unfortunately it never translated really to a, a live setting uh, i don't think i've ever heard a great sounding version of unholy live i thought it would work real well for gene when he did it as the demon because it's really a demon song it's like his yeah God of Thunder of the 90s. Um, but uh, he can't really sing it that well live. One of the few times a Kiss song is much better in the studio than live. I think uh, mo most of the songs becomes better. They become better live. But this, just he, he never nailed it live vocally. It, it is it is a song that he has a hard time singing in that register live yeah. because in the studio you can go and you can double track and you can triple track and make it sound really big oh, and yeah. full in that lower voice and he doesn't have a powerful voice at that l register that's why when he no. sings it you, whenever he goes up higher he's much more stronger a singer but he, he, he I agree with you 150 percent he could not sing this one as good live as he did in studio but still it's a fantastic song Ken yeah it's on my list um it's yeah I, I agree it's not live yeah i've never heard a good live version 
or a great live version of it. Um, I've seen it live, you know, on the Revenge Tour and, and so on. Maybe the best version was, I'm going to guess, I can't remember now for sure, they must have done it in the stone. Um, that may have been the only time it was really good is <laughs> when, you know, the very first show of their, you know, promotion tour for, yeah. for Revenge. Um, and then after that, he probably thought, oh, I can't keep singing like that. My voice is going to blow yeah. or something like that. So it's it's a great song. It, it deserves to be on the list, um, you know, and the last, maybe one of their last great heavy songs that they ever did. Right. So that was our number five song. We're into the tail end of the list now. And coming in with 50 points, another opener of an album, and another Paul Stanley classic song. We're talking about I Stole Your Love. So what's the breakdown for I Stole Your Love? All four of us voted for I Stole Your Love. I gave it 14. Ken gave it 7. Daniel 9. And Mark. 20 points for I Stole Your Love. Yes, I, I'm definitely a big fan of the song. It's one of the songs that I enjoy playing on guitar still to this day. Sometimes when I'm sitting here, you know, waiting for something to, you know, what if I'm saving something or if I'm rendering something or working on something, I'll just pick up the guitar and find myself just da -na 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 play. I've always loved that opening riff. So, uh, great song. Let's go over to Ken. What, what's your thoughts on I Stole Your Love? Yeah, I was going to say, you could probably play it while you're waiting for the Sam Loomis download to finish. You know, yes. Yeah. Ken, Ken <laughs> plays it while he's waiting for us to buy stuff to come in the mail. That's right. <laughs> I've been playing it forever, too. <laughs> it's <laughs> broke the strings, even. No. Um, yeah, I Stole Your Love, one of the greatest lead-off songs ever on, on the Kiss uh on the Kiss album, um, so I, I love it just like I love, you know, I I want you, you know, two two albums in a row they had some great. Well, there's so many great lead off songs on all their albums. I mean, it's just a, a pretty pretty amazing. But I stole your love. It always ranked up high for me. I thought it's one of Paul's best written songs. Daniel, I think I discovered this one um, on one of the long format videos. I think they had a version from Houston '77. Yeah. On, uh, I, I don't remember which one it was, or if it was extreme close up or uh, exposed or uh, whatever. Uh, but I just seen that version, and this is a song that really works live. Uh, the studio version is great, but live, this is one of my all time favorite songs. So I'm glad it made the, the, the list this high. Lonnie. Yeah, talk about a song that really works live, but a song they never play live, and it, it's very disappointing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they 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 even going back to '96 on the reunion tour, they they barely touched the song live um, since then. It's, and, and to me, it's a, it's a real shame because it does work so well live. It is such a great a great Kiss song, a great opener to, to Love Gun. I mean, I mean, we I think we all voted it higher than than Love Gun itself um, on our list. Is how much we all and how much we all like the song. So. You know, can't say enough good things about about that. It's, it's definitely one of my favorites. Absolutely true. Number three, we are here with 57 points and a song that, you know, people would be surprised I voted this song so high. But, you know, not really, because I've always said before, I didn't have a, a, an issue with this song before. It is, of course, another Paul Stanley penned classic, uh, you know, I love the live version of this song much better than the studio version. We're talking about Detroit Rock City. Mm. And what's the breakdown for this, Lonnie? Well, it's funny you mentioned Mark, because <laughs> Mark, gets, Mark gives it 18 points. I gave it 19 points. Dano gives it 20 points. And Ken gives Detroit Rock City zero points. What the? <laughs> Your <laughs> hatred toward Paul Stanley just can't stand. Uh, well, Detroit Rock City mentioned. does not crack ten, Ken's top 20, but songs like Naked City, The Oath, <laughs> and All Hells Breaking Loose somehow manage to squeeze their way on Ken's list. Wow. And well, explain yourself. 
<laughs> wow. This is. I know. I mean, you mentioned to me. I was like, how the hell did that fall off my list? I, I messaged. But it it, it, it was an that one was a definite accident. Um, I messaged Ken. I messaged Ken during the week and I said, "Yeah, I'm throwing your list has no credibility at all." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, it is what you know, whatever. Uh, but Detroit Rock City, yeah, great song. It should be on my list. It was on my list. Not. I overrode it with something else, and then I didn't. For some reason, I didn't notice that I overrode knocked it, it off and it fell off. You overrode it with the O. Uh, I guess the my o list was in a like different that. order originally because I was expecting it <laughs> us to go a different way and whatever. It fell off. It you know. So I said, I said, ah, we'll just go without it. What the, you know, I know it's going to be up there anyway. <laughs> so what yeah. the what the heck? It's so, still number three. Great it's song. It, three. Yeah, it it deserves to be in the top ten. No no doubt. Uh, that's what, it should be in my top 10 technically but it isn't <laughs> yes. oh well all right so let's go to daniel yeah it's just a perfect song you know note for note um uh the lyrics uh the solo even though it's a simple one it's one of the few solos that you know the crowd sing along to uh I actually like the production of this one on, on uh, Destroyer. I think it sounds pretty pretty good on, on Destroyer. Uh, I could do without the intro, you know, yeah. the car. Uh, but the first time you hear it with the car, I think it's kind of cool. But then you get tired of it. Yeah. And even though it's been played, I guess, almost every Kiss concert throughout the, the years, I still haven't grown tired of it. And I think it's because it's a pretty... There's so many variations in the song and different riffs and um, all kind of stuff going on. And I, I love the drums. Actually, I prefer the way Eric Singer drew, drums to this song uh, mm. with, you know, the double bass yeah. instead of, of Peter Chris's version. Uh, awesome song. Lonnie. No, I love it. Um, I um, it probably like the first Kiss song I ever heard. My brother had had destroyer may, may have been the first kiss song i ever, actually ever heard um absolutely love it always look forward to it in, in concert like the annual said i mean i i, I mean i've played it at every concert price since 1976 but i i still can't get enough of it and i look forward to it whenever i go see the band live look always look forward to hearing the song you know and you guys have talked about oh you know one of the first songs i've learned how to play on guitar I mean, it's one of the first songs I learned how to play on the guitar. And, like, my guitar teacher and I would, like, would practice the solo. And we'd have, like, the, the Paul Stanley, Ace Fairly thing going on, mm -hmm. like, as we're, as we're doing it, you know. And it's, like, how freaking cool is this playing it, you know. Like, I'm just a new student of guitar. And I'm, I hardly talk about playing guitar on the show because I really, really suck. But um, probably because I don't have fucking time. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but um, actually, I, I, but I love the song. I can't get enough of it. So it's, it's definitely high on my list. Nice. So, we are on to the last two songs of the list. Black, I'm so, taking a wild guess. Can it yeah. be Black Diamond and Deuce? Maybe. So, mm. let's see. <laughs> Number two at 66 points is a song that our leader captain always talks about mm -hmm. as his favorite song be of his all time. Here. Yes, and if he was here, he would be voting it for sure as his number one song. And I'm sure it's going to be ranking very high with all of us. And that is Deuce with 66 points. What is the breakdown, Lonnie? Breakdown for 66 for Deuce is Mark with 13, Ken with 15, I gave it 17, and Daniel gives it 21, his favorite Kiss song. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so let's go over to Daniel then. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't like the Sudi version uh, on the first mm -hmm. album. I never cared for it. So uh, I didn't really listen to this one until Alive 3. On Live 3, it was given new life, mostly through Eric Singer's great drumming, uh, but also <laughs> Bruce Kulick, Bruce Kulick uh, did some tasteful guitar work on that song. Yeah. And I always go to that version. Uh, that's my favorite version, the Alive 3 version, I think it's. Alive 1 is great as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, that that's awesome as well. But when I heard the Alive Three version, uh, and I looked back, it became one of my favorite songs. Ah, uh, maybe Creatures of Night could be number one or Detroit Rock City, uh, but this week it was Deuce. Nice. 
So let's go over to Ken. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, this is one of their greatest songs and one of one of Gene's best ever songs. Um, still, people wonder like, what's a deuce? <laughs> what are they doing? Like but you know, um, it's 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 just a great song. That's why they keep playing it. You know, just like Detroit Rock City, um, they pl- they they'll play that forever in concert until they hang it up. You know, they'll be playing five, in, in ten years. In ten years, at the never-ending <laughs> tour, <laughs> a never-ending tour. <laughs> Trademark yes. that. Um, so, uh, yeah, Deuce is is heavy, and I agree with Daniel that it's yeah, it's another one of those songs that live is the way you want to hear it. Uh, there's a lot of songs on the first album that are that way where all of those are are better on their live versions too so great song yeah Lonnie um, I love Deuce I really do it is one of my favorites and I I like it when they open with Detroit Rock City but I always feel like Deuce should always be the opener I think I think it works so perfectly as an opener of the curtain drop and it's just, it's just fitting for it. I, I, I love it as an opener. I love the song period. I love the energy that the band gives off when they're playing it live. And even the, the cheesy and corny dance that they do at, at the end of it together. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to you want to talk about you want to hear a, a rise from the crowd. You know, they do that little swaying thing. The crowd cheers really loud every single time they do it. So that's why they keep doing it for, for nearly 50 years. So um, lo- love the song. Love the riff. The it's, it's classic kiss. It's why we're here. Agreed. Now, we are at number one. And it's ironic that when we get to this song, that the main singer of this song has not been represented at all in this list True. until we get to this song right here. And, you know, it's interesting that while Paul, Paul starts this song, you know, it's Mr. Peter Chris who really nails this song perfectly. And whether it's on the first album or whether it's on a live or any of the following concerts that they do, that they play the song on, it's always been my favorite Kiss song of all time. And I think that a lot of us here can probably echo that. That's really high up on our list. Maybe not your favorite, but it's one, it is my favorite. I mean, just that opening, out on the streets for a living. I've always loved that intro. And Peter Chris with his whiskey voice for the rest of the song. I mean, this is to me a perfectly written song. At 70 points, we cap off the list with Black Diamond. Lonnie, what's the breakdown? And we get to 70 points with me giving it 13, Daniel giving it 15, and Mark and Ken each giving it top of their list with 21 yeah. points there we go so let's go to ken number top of the list one as well what's, what's your thoughts yeah um yeah this has always been my favorite i've always say it's my favorite kiss song i just love it i love the riff in it um we talked about riffs earlier but i always love the riff in this one uh and then again just like the other like deuce the the live version is just you know kills it versus you know the on the on the record and with the you know ending droning at the end of the slowdown yeah. all, all that i still don't understand that that producing yeah. uh idea or whatever they came up that you know how they came up with that um so black diamond yeah my all-time favorite uh kiss song um i don't think it'll change uh it's a it's and it you know it's not a gene song and i see um just just love it and again peter chris vocals just perfect for the song um and he just wails on it you know especially live so you know you know it's it's number one if you chose it as number one you're right on board there that's right daniel what is your thoughts on black diamond um I think it's one of the, be- the their best songs for sure, uh, uh, and um, I actually like the version when they do you know that ending. I think they came up with it during the uh, Creatures of the Night tour, 
Uh, oh, they yeah. definitely did it. In, yes. They yeah. definitely mm -hmm. did it in Tokyo '95, for example. Yeah. They did uh, that ending. I think that's uh, probably that's my favorite idea. instrumental Kiss mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Just that part that they stick on uh, on the end of the song. Um, but another thing I, I like about about the first record is. Uh, what they wrote about at this point they try to be kind of street you know kind of dangerous yeah. and you can see it in a lot of the songs for example black diamond and uh, um, some of the others as well um, uh, for example cold gin feels like <laughs> very street dangerous and I, I know mark at, at one point said it was kind of a new york album it feels mm -hmm. like you you're, you're you're there in new new york and uh, you're walking the streets and you see all 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 the mess that that's there. So uh, I like everything about, about this song. I think it's um, I guessed in the beginning of at the, at the top of the show that this would be the winner, and uh, yeah. it's a uh, it's a uh, it deserves the, one of the top positions for sure. Lonnie. No, Dan, Daniel called it from the jump of the show. He was like, it's going to be Black Diamond. And, you know, sure enough, it was. And, and it wasn't even Daniel's top pick. Uh, <laughs> but we sing the song's praises on, on the show quite a bit. And there's not there's not anything not to like about, about the song. It, it kind of sums up Kiss the, with the sound and the two Ace Frehley guitar solos before it's all said and done. And Peter, Peter's vocals just belting it out the whole time. It's um, it's classic hits. It really is, and it and it's a staple in the in the set list. And it's, you know, it, it just represents. It's 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 so much of what Kiss is all about. So, um, very very deservedly at the top of the list. Well, there you have it, folks. Number one was Black Diamond. Now, I, I feel personally, overall, this list was pretty pretty good. I mean, I I don't think there was any real shockers on this list as far as what were you know that we thought that there was something on here that we shouldn't have made the top 20 i think that everything on here deserves to be in this position uh you know i think the songs that didn't make it that we picked you know a lot of them i think are just more you know our personal favorites maybe and overall maybe wouldn't have probably stood as a real classic compared to these ones but we did learn a very important thing though in doing this list that there's great hatred from Ken towards Paul <laughs> Stanley. Especially Detroit Rock City. Yeah. Hatred from and, you guys from Gene. <laughs> and, and, and maybe it is because of our dislike of Gene Simmons, uh, he's thinking. <laughs> but at the end of the day, look, we like what we like. We Today, our list is like this. Tomorrow, it could be a completely different list. Maybe some other songs that are being picked and you know, other ones wouldn't have been on here. So this my friends it's probably one of the longer episodes we've done in a very long time so i know a lot of you kiss people out there have been clamoring for a longer episode so here you go you have a longer one this week i'm sure julian will be more than pleased to have to go through this one uh and uh Maybe we can we can put in some time stamps so we don't have to watch all of it that might be a good idea yeah and uh yeah, I mean, but I think most people will be, in, they enjoy these kinds of breakdowns of, of songs. Just to say, yes, Ken. I had eight Paul Stanley songs on my list, so mm. not much. <laughs> it, I leaned a little bit on the Gene side, eight, but. Eight song, eight Paul Stanley songs he likes better than Detroit Rock City. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That one, so it would have so, been nine. Yeah. <laughs> so that's this episode for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, be sure to leave your comments again this week. Let us know what you think. Was our list good? Do you think we missed some obvious things? Do you think we're crazy? What's your thoughts on Ken's hatred of Paul Stanley? Uh, and also, uh, you know, be sure to give us some ideas if you're thinking about some future future episodes. And, uh, you know, we look forward to hearing your comments. Uh, so let's leave it at that. So on behalf of myself, Daniel, Ken, and Lonnie, we will all see you next week and have a safe and happy weekend. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show.
We hope you'll join us again.